Nine ways to awaken the divine masculine within you. We hear a lot these days about wild women, female spiritual ascension, and the awakening of the sacred feminine. Go on any form of social media and you're bound to find discussions surrounding sisterhood, female mysticism, womb magic, and contacting or worshipping the goddess within. While it is important that we honour the divine feminine, we must not forget that the divine masculine is alive within each and every one of us as well. The only way we can truly become awakened and spiritually mature beings is to integrate both sides of our nature as men and women, not simply one above the other. Why has the divine masculine been ignored? How often have you seen the divine masculine discussed or revered as opposed to the divine feminine? Be honest. Not very much. Maybe a few people here and there have touched on the matter, but overall people aren't paying that much attention to the topic. Let's face it, there's not an overwhelmingly large number of positive role models out there of the Divine Masculine. In fact, to come across a truly mature and integrated male is rather like stumbling upon a rare delicacy or mythical unicorn. Why is this the case? The unfortunate reality is that up until this point in history, we have mostly been presented with the shadow side of the masculine. We have seen how bloodthirsty, arrogant, domineering and destructive masculine energy can be. Therefore most of us have lost our interest and dare I say, respect for this fundamental aspect of existence. The tragic truth is that most of the large-scale suffering in history has been instigated, inflicted and or carried out by men. And until this day, the man, a phrase that refers to governments and authorities, continues to inflict oppression and spread greed, prejudice and corruption. The crusades and witch hunts, two major world wars, genocides, tribal race wars, dictators, terrorist groups, fundamentalist religions and cults, and the mass rape and murder committed across the world. I could go on and on about the atrocities committed largely by men. It's no wonder that many people have a bad taste in their mouth and the divine masculine is being ignored. Benefits of awakening the divine masculine. Here's what you can expect to experience once you begin working with your divine masculine. More self-confidence, enhanced ability to be objective, improved critical thinking and analytical skills, emotional balance, connection to the warrior within, increased ability to set strong boundaries, more self-assertiveness, enhanced willpower, improved self-discipline, mental clarity. Nine ways to awaken the divine masculine within you. As I said previously, spiritual maturity is about nurturing, honoring and balancing both sides of your nature. And all men, women and non-binaries possess both a masculine and feminine aspect inside. Ignoring, suppressing, demonizing or treating one type of energy as less than another is immature and ultimately creates suffering. Don't give fuel to your shadow self. Don't perpetuate more division within this world. Learn how to awaken both types of energy within you in a healthy way. Here's how. Number one, examine your wounds surrounding the masculine. As a male or female or non-binary, what has your experience been like with men? Have you had a supportive male figure in your life, for example a father or brothers? Have you experienced mostly abusive relationships or connections with other men? Or have you experienced a little bit of both? Examining your wounds will help you to find any unconscious beliefs, biases or prejudice you have towards men. These mental and emotional blockages are very revealing and will help you to develop and strengthen a healthy bond with your inner divine masculine. Write down your experiences and reflect on the themes that arise such as abandonment, friendship, alienation, love and hate, emotional connection and distance, etc. Number two, take self-responsibility. Look after yourself, own your actions, Take responsibility for your happiness. Don't permit yourself to become a victim who needs to be rescued. To awaken the divine masculine, you need to be accountable for your thoughts, feelings and choices. Don't blame other people when things go wrong. 
This is pointless and a waste of energy. Respect yourself, be mature and reclaim your warrior energy. Number three, contact your inner father. We all possess many sides of our nature. Psychologist Carl Jung call the different faces of our psyches archetypes. The father is a universal archetype that we all carry inside, regardless of whether we're male or female. One powerful way of awakening your divine masculine is to contact this inner father and develop a relationship with him. I recommend practices such as journaling, various forms of artistic expression such as painting, automatic writing, and even using the tarot as a way of contacting your inner father. Explore what he wants to share with you. Remember that your inner father is kind and benevolent. In what ways can you father yourself better or be the father that you never really had to yourself? Number four, deconstruct your conditioning. What have you been conditioned to believe about what it means to be a man? We collectively and individually carry so much baggage when it comes to defining masculinity. Common forms of conditioning that many of us have received regarding men include, for example, Men shouldn't cry because it makes you a wimp or sissy. Men must be stoic and not express their emotions. Men must have career. Men must be the head of the household. Men are primarily logical and left brain oriented. Men have to be interested in sport. Men are the protectors of women and children. Men must dominate women physically, sexually and career wise. Men are expected to be aggressively self-confident. Men must look strong and have muscles. Can you think of any other forms of conditioning that I have left out? Once you have discovered what your culture has taught you about men, you will be more capable of consciously redefining what masculinity means to you. This will allow you to develop a healthy relationship with your inner divine masculine. Ask yourself, what does matured and balanced masculinity look like to me? Number five, find a masculine teacher, guide or figure you admire. Thankfully, there are some wonderful examples of embodied divine masculine energy out there. These men may be among your inner circle of friends or family members, and if so, feel blessed. If you don't know anyone who reflects the divine masculine in your life, don't worry, you aren't short of options out there. There are many teachers alive today such as Adyashanti, Eckhart Tolle, Muji and the Dalai Lama who embody the divine masculine. There are also deceased teachers from the past such as Krishnamurti, Lao Tzu and the Buddha who express masculine energy in a mature way. Don't be afraid to use fictional heroes or mythical gods as your guides either. Just ensure that you don't idealize or worship these figures. Simply admire, respect and learn from them. Ultimately, what is important is that you learn from these role models and embody and express your own divine masculine. Number six, connect with your inner warrior. The inner warrior is another face or expression of the divine masculine. But please don't mistake what I'm saying for the way warriors are portrayed in modern times. Your inner warrior isn't interested in dominating, killing others or fighting for peace. Your inner warrior supports and protects you. He takes no bullshit. He will defend your rights peacefully but assertively. He will cut through the lies and see with clarity. He values truth, courage and inner strength. When you bring more of the warrior energy into your life, you are awakening the divine masculine. You are reconnecting to the wholeness deep within yourself. To build a strong connection with this energy, you must discover the look and feel of your inner warrior. What is his personality like? What does he enjoy doing? When does he appear in your life? And in what areas could you benefit more from his presence? Examples of ways to contact and connect with your inner warrior include practicing martial arts, boxing, vigorous exercise, guided visualizations, becoming an activist, yang yoga, artistic self-expression, and the list goes on. Number seven, be assertive and stick up for yourself. 
Being assertive isn't about being angry or confrontational, nor is it about throwing yourself in another person's face. To be assertive is to respect yourself and your needs. If you're a quiet person or an introvert, it's likely that you struggle with assertiveness. I've explored how to overcome that passivity in my book, Quiet Strength. One of the best ways to start with being assertive is to define your needs. What need is not being met? How do you feel when your boundaries are being overstepped? Assertiveness requires courage, so it is important to take little steps. Above all, always remember that your needs and opinions are just as valid as anyone else's. Number eight, stand in a confident way. Our body language has a powerful impact on how we feel, and vice versa. Try this experiment for a moment. Let your shoulders drop forward, hunch over, and cross your arms so that you're in a C shape. How do you feel? Now straighten your back and shoulders and let your chest be exposed so that you're in an I shape. How do you feel? Although it might be uncomfortable and foreign at first, improving your posture will help you to send the unconscious signal that you are confident, calm and secure in yourself. This is an amazingly simple way to get in touch with your divine masculine side. Number nine, stop being passive and start being active. Be the instigator, initiator and giver within your relationships and life in general. Take the initiative to go out of your way to set goals, make plans and work toward your dreams. Don't let passivity make you apathetic and lazy. Feed your inner fire and do something with it. Finally, if you work with essential oils or herbs, you may like to explore herbs such as licorice root, Damiana, ashwagandha, and essential oils such as cypress, cedarwood, sandalwood, and vetiver to supplement the advice in this article. If you work with crystals, you may like to incorporate the following stones into your rituals. Shiva lingam, red jasper, green tourmaline, tiger eye, pyrite, malachite, and labradorite. Ultimately, there is no division in life. It is the human mind that likes to label and separate things. The masculine and feminine are therefore two sides of the same coin. I hope this article has inspired you to create more balance and wholeness in your life.